everyone, and welcome back to Cardiac Radio for Teens. For those of you who don't know, I'm Bia, and Cardiac Radio for Teens is a place where teens can come together and talk with other teens about spiritist topics and te- topics and teachings, and hopefully try and make more sense out of it. Instead of just reading a book or listen to adults lecture, we can put it in our own words and try and understand it more than we would in just a typical book or adult lecture. Today we will continue on reading the Spirit's book like we have been for the past couple of weeks, and hopefully we'll be able to learn something together about it. Last week we left up last left off on the last part in chapter four. The chapter four is the vital principle, and the title of this last page, the last section, is intelligence and instinct. And so we'll continue right off there at question seventy one. But just a reminder about how this book is formatted. Each question was asked to the spirits. So the question is in italics. And then the answer from the spirits is in quotations. And then sometimes Kardec adds in his own little input. And that's in a smaller font. So that way we clearly know who's talking at what time. So let's just pick up right where we left off, which is The last part in chapter 4, Intelligence and Instinct. Question 71. Is intelligence an attribute of the vital principle? The spirits answered, No, plants are alive, but they do not think. They only have organic life. Intelligence and matter are independent of each other. A body may be alive, yet lack knowledge, but intelligence can be an expression through material organs. Only the union with spirit endows animalistic matter with intelligence. And then Kardec puts his own little comment and he says, Intelligence is a special faculty possessed by certain classes of organic beings, which it endows with thought, the willpower to act, and the awareness of their own existence and individuality. Additionally, It endows them with the means to establish relationships with the external world, and it provides for their their needs. We may therefore distinguish the following. First, animate beings formed of matter alone, without vitality or intelligence, are the, these are the solid bodies of mineral. Second, animate non-think, Animate, non-thinking beings, forms of matter, and endowed with vitality, but not intelligence. Third, animate beings, formed by matter, endowed with vitality, and possessed of an intelligent principle that gives them the ability to think. So that was a big, long, complicated answer, so let's go through that piece by piece. So the question that they're asking is intelligence and attribute of the vital principle. The vital principle that we talked about last time, which in simple terms kind of makes things alive. So with matter. So the spirit said no, because the vital principle makes plants alive, but plants don't think. They don't reason and talk and everything that we do. So plants don't think. So it doesn't just because they have the vital principle and just because they're alive doesn't mean that they have intelligence some sort of intelligence and they said that intelligence and matter are independent of each other so we must have a body must have the connection with this with a spirit to have it a sort of intelligence they said only the union with the spirit endows animalized material with intelligence so us being bonded with a spirit creates makes the body just the physical body makes it be able to think or else we would just be like plants we wouldn't think so matter and intelligence are two separate things and then kardec goes and tries to break it down and he says how the first thing is inanimate beings beings that aren't alive so they're just they're just there they're the minerals and the stuff that isn't alive and then the second is the animate, but non-thinking. So these are the plants. And because they're alive, but they're not thinking, they're not moving, they're not doing stuff that we're doing. And the third class would be the animate beings 
formed by the matter, but we have intelligence due to our connection with spirits. And that's basically classifying it in three categories that Kardec tried to do for us. Question 72. What is the source of intelligence? The spirits answered, We have already said, the universal intelligence. And then there is a little sub-question to that, so 72b. Could we say that every intelligent being draws and assimilates a portion of intelligence from the universal source in the same way it draws and assimilates the principle of material life? The spirits answered, that is only an imprecise comparison because intelligence is a factor, is a faculty proper to each being and comprises its mental individual. Besides, you already know that there are matters humans are not allowed to comprehend. This is one of them for now. So the first question is, what's the source of intelligence? Where does intelligence come from? And they said that the universal intelligence, just like they're, this is what they were asking. They were saying, is it like how the vital principle, we all just get some of it, it all just, it exists. But they said that the source of intelligence is the universal principle, universal intelligence. And then when we try to get a, a more, a longer answer, more information that we can actually understand from them, they say that this is a topic that we're not going to be able to understand and it's not for us to know right now because as humans as we talked before we don't have all the words to describe everything and all the capabilities of understanding everything that's really out there to learn and so they're saying for right now we'll just leave it that the source of intelligence is the universal intelligence and we won't get too complicated into it question 73 is instinct something other than intelligence? The spirits answered, Not exactly. It is a type of intelligence. Instinct is non-reasoning intelligence, through which we all, all beings provide for their own needs. So the question was about if instinct, if when, say, an animal, if they're cold, just like rats sometimes in the winter, or a little mice, how they're inside our houses because when they know that they're cold outside, their instincts are telling them to come inside, find some place that's warm, find something. Or when the birds move south because their instincts are telling them, oh, well, it's too cold. So they're saying, is instinct, is instinct different than intelligence? And they said, not exactly. Instinct is a type of intelligence. So it's kind of like a subcategory. You have intelligence and then instinct is inside of intelligence. And they said that instinct is non-reasoning intelligence. So you don't need to reason with yourself. You don't really need to think about it. It's just something you do automatically. And it's that all beings do it to provide for their own needs. Like we were talking about with the mice. They just come in. They know that they're cold, so they need to find somewhere that's warmer. Question 74. Can we draw a line between instinct and intelligence? i.e. can we determine that one ends when and the other begins the spirits answered no for they are frequently commingling however we can very well distinguish the actions belong to instinct from those belonging to intelligence so here they're asking okay so can we split up instinct and intelligence can we exactly know when we're using intelligence and exactly know when we're using instinct so they're saying no because usually they commingle. They're usually together. They're they're both working together at the same time. So it's hard to see that if it's just instinct or just intelligence. But they said that. But they said that it's clear sometimes to distinguish between the actions of what we do. It's clear to see that some stuff is instinct and some stuff is intelligence. So like for the example we were using with the birds, how they they go south in the winter because it's cold up here and they know that they don't actually know they're not thinking they're not reasoning with themselves but their instincts tell them it's cold let's get out of here so that's they say that the actions is a clear we have a clear way of seeing that this action you were using intelligence and this one you were using instinct 
Question 75. Is it correct to say that the instinctive faculty decreases as the inte intellectual faculties increase? The spirits answered, No, instinct is always present, but humans neglect it. Instinct can lead us to the good. It almost always guides us, sometimes more surely than our reason. It never errs. So here it's saying that, so when we get smarter, when we have more intelligence, do we lose our instincts, our instincts to say, okay, it's cold, I need a jacket. Do we lose our instincts or when we become more intelligent? And they say, no, instinct is always present. So it's always going to be something we have. But it says, but humans neglect it. So we forget about it and we start reasoning too much in our heads. You know when you overthink something like a million times? So you're overthinking and overthinking, but you could have just had the your instinct and done it and that would have been it. But we have a, since we do have intelligence, we're also thinking and overthinking so many things. And they say that instinct can lead us to the good and it almost guides us always guides us and it says that it's never it's never our instincts are never wrong it's just like on a test when people say oh just go with the first answer that you thought because when you start thinking about it too much and you're overthinking it then you start changing your answers and then you change it to the wrong answers so sometimes we just have to go to our instincts but humans neglect that and then there's a sub question that comes after it and it says why is reason always an infallible guide the spirits answered, It would be if it not distorted by pride, selfishness, and faculty, fa faulty education. Instinct does not reason, whereas reason calls for choices and endows human with free will. So here, the question was, So why can't we just go with our why can't we go with just our reasoning if just like okay it's cold so i need a jacket but for some situations why can't we just go with it why is it wrong to follow sometimes and they said that it would be a a good way to follow it would be a right thing to okay you think about it and you reason with yourself so this is better than this but they're saying that the way that we reason gets distorted by our pride and our selfishness and some t and how we were raised so sometimes we're reasoning something but our thoughts on that topic are wrong so we're reasoning incorrectly so they're saying that it would be but we we get too far away from the true meaning cuz we put in our own bias we put in our own input it's like for the jacket example if we followed our reasoning, so it's cold, I should put on a jacket, a hat, but then you start thinking, oh, well, that's not cool to wear, or my jacket's dirty, so I'm not going to wear anything, and then you're just in a little long sleeve shirt, but you're freezing. So that's kind of how our own bias plays in, because, okay, we want to have the cooler jacket, or we want this or that, so our reason is getting affected by that. And then Kardec put his own comment, and it says, Instinct is a rudimentary of intelligence. It differs from intelligence, per se, in that its manifestations are almost always spontaneous, while those, intelligence, those of intelligence are the results of thought and deliberate action. Instinct manifests in various ways according to the different species and their needs. In, in beginning with consciousness and the perception of external things, it allies itself with intelligence, with will and freedom. So here he just kind of summed up what we were talking about this whole section in chapter 4. And he was saying how that instinct is different from intelligence, it's, but it's like the basic intelligence. And we do that spontaneously. Like, we don't have to think about it. It just happens. And... Even like the leaves, that's like they're saying, like the leaves, when it's cold, they they change color, they fall off the trees, and that's instant because they're not thinking. They're not thinking about, oh, let me change the, change the color of my leaves to look pretty or something because like we talked about before, they don't have that source of intelligence. So, so they're saying that 
when it's by instinct, it happens spontaneously and quick, and you don't even think about it. But when you're using your reason and you're using intelligence, it usually takes a lot more thought and your own personal opinions. So that's the end of chapter four, and now we're moving on to part two of the book. Within like how there's parts in the chapters, there's also large parts like part two because we only that was all of part one those 75 questions so there's these big chunks of of pages that would be a certain part so now we're on to part two which consists of many many chapters so we'll be on part two for a while and part part two the title of it is the spirit world or the world of spirits so that's kind of the fundamentals of what we're going to be talking in this whole part for the next however many weeks. So now the chapter numbers reset, so we're going to chapter one in part two, but the questions are still numbered the same way we were going. So we're gonna start again on question 76. But chapter one is titled Spirits, and the first part of it is The Origin and Nature of Spirits. Question 76. How may we define spirits? The spirits answered, We can say that spirits are the intelligent beings of creation. They populate the universe beyond the material world. So here they gave us a definition of what spirits are. And they said that spirits are the intelligence, the intelligent being of creation. So they're, like, let's say the primary source of intelligence. If you're going to think of an intelligent population, you're not thinking of humans, you're thinking of the spirits. And they say that they populate the whole universe, and it's not about material, it's not about being on a planet that's like Earth, you have to be on Earth, it's all over in different forms, and it's beyond any type of material stuff that we have here on Earth. Question 77. Are spirits being distinct from the divinity, or are they only emancipations or portions of the divinity? The reason why they are called children of God. The spirits answered, Goodness gracious, of course they are God's work. It is like a man who built a machine, for example. The machine is the man's work, but not the man himself. You know that when individuals make nice and useful things, they call them their children, their creation. Well then, it is the same with God. We are God's children because we are products of the divine work. So here the question was, were we all created by God or are we all a small piece of God? And they said that we are not a small piece of God, we are God's work, we are what he created. So, I like the example that they put in here about a, machi- a, a machine. So, a man builds a machine. And so, the machine is his creation, but the machine isn't a part of him. He didn't take off his arm and leave that as a machine. So, we, so we are God's creation. We're God's children because he created us, but not because we are God or a little piece of it. Question 78. Did spirits have a beginning, or have they existed from all eternity like God? The spirits answered, If spirits had no beginning, they would be equal to God. On the contrary, they are God's creation and subject to the divine will. God has has existed for all eternity. That is inconsensible. But we know, But we know nothing as to when and how spirits were created. You could say that we had no no beginning if the meaning of if the meaning that since God is eternal then God must have always and unceasingly created spirits nevertheless when and how each of us was created individually I will repeat no one knows it is a mystery so here they ask do the spirits have a beginning like did, is there a certain period of time when God was like, let's create spirits? Or did they just exist from all eternity like God? And they said that if spirits existed for all eternity, then they would kind of be equal to God because how would God create them if they were if they existed at the same time? So it's saying that the spirits had to have some sort of beginning, some sort of 
some sort of after God because if God is eternal then God had to create them so they couldn't have been eternal but no one knows not even any of the spirits know when exactly every spirit was created question 79 since there are two general elements in the universe the intelligence element and the material element could we say that spirits are formed from the intelligent element while inner bodies are formed from the material element? The spirit said, Obviously, spirits are individualized of the intelligent principle, just as bodies are individualized of material principle. It is the time and manner of this formation that we do not know. So, the question was, are, like, spirits made up of the intelligence element, the intelligent element, and are bodies are material bodies, are they made of material elements? And they said, obviously. And I love how they kind of put a little bit of sarcasm in it. They're like, obviously, how come you're answering that question, asking that question? And they said, um, the spirits are individualized of their material, of their intelligent principle. So the spirits comprise of this intelligence just like how we were saying before with the other question how it's the connection between the spirit and the physical body that makes human beings intelligence because just like because for plants there's no connection with the spirit so they don't have that intelligence so it's the connection of the two so yes yeah, spirits are the intelligent and and the body is the material, and the combination of the two, the connection of the two, is what is what makes human beings and what we think, yeah, human beings. And But they say that the time and the manner of how this happens, so the time is what they don't know. Question 80. Is the creation of spirits continuous, or did it occur at the beginning of time? The spirits answered. It is continuous, which means that God has never ceased creating them. So this question they're saying, so are spirits still being created or was it like a one-time creation? So did we just create it one time or and that's it? Or is it like a factory where you keep making and making and making and making stuff? So they said that it's continuous, meaning that God has never stopped creating them. So God is still continuing to create new spirits. Question 81. Are spirits formed spontaneously or do they proceed from one another? The spirits answered, Like all other creatures, God created them by divine will. But let me repeat once more, their origin is a mystery. So the question was, if spirits are formed spontaneously just kind of like out of thin air or do they do they proceed from one another kind of like humans like how we have children so they're saying how do they just appear and they're saying that god created it created all of us all of the spirits by divine will but once again they don't know the the, the manner the time of the creation of spirits Question 82. Is it correct to say that spirits are immaterial? The spirits answered, How can we define something when we have no terms for comparison, when we only have in, an insufficient language at our disposal? Can one who was born blind define light? Immaterial is not the right word. Incorporeal would be precise, because you should understand that since it is a creation, a spirit must be something. A spirit is a quintessential matter. Thus, you have no analogies for describing it. It is also so etherealized that your senses cannot perceive it. So here they're saying, the question was, are spirits immaterialized? So like, do they not have any matter? Like, our bodies, it's all this, this matter, this physical matter. So there's this physical material. So they're saying, are spirits just... They just don't have anything. But they're saying that we just don't have the right words to compare because to us, we only know that you're a physical matter being or you're not. So, But for them, there's so much more to it. So they're saying that we don't really have the words that it takes to describe a certain thing, just like a blind person describing what light is. 
but they said that the spirit is a quintessential matter and they put a little footnote to that and says quintessence means the fifth essence the pure and concentrated essence of a substance so it's the pure and concentrated essence of matter so that's it's this original form but and then we are a different form of matter and then Kardec put his little sub comment that we'll read we say that spirits are immaterial because their essence differs from everything we label as matter a nation of blind people would not have any words for expressing light and its effects those who are in fact born blind imagine that they perceive everything through their hearing smell taste and touch but they would not be able to comprehend ideas that came to them through the sense they lack in the same way we are too blind regarding the essence of superhuman beings we cannot define them except by an effort involving our imagination or by making com comparisons that will always be imperfect so here he continued on with what they said and he said that he continued again with the blind people that they can describe light so we're like blind people trying to describe what they are but no matter what we try to come up with it'll always be imperfect there'll always be something to it because we can't imagine something like that we can't a blind can't imagine light question 83 do spirits have an end can we uh, we can understand that the principle from which they emancipate is eternal but what we are asking is whether or not their own individuality will come to an end and whether or not like material bodies at some given time in the near or distant future the elements from which they had had been formed with disintegration and returned to the mass from which it came it is difficult to understand how something that had a beginning will not also have an end so here the basic question is do spirits die do they stop existing like just like how in the material world how we only have a certain period of time when until our body dies our physical body of course so they're saying do the spirits have a point where they kind of like die and the spirits answered there are many things that you do not understand because your intelligence is limited that is no reason to reject them a child does not understand everything that its parents understand, nor does an uneducated person understand all that a scholar understands. We are saying that spirit, spirit's individual existence never comes to an end. That is all we can say for now. So here they said that that there's so many things that we can't understand. Again, this whole topic is a little stuff we can't understand yet. And they're saying that we're not going to be able to understand what they understand, but... For simple terms, for all we need to know right now, is that spirits don't come to an end. They don't die. They don't, they're not just going to stop existing, just like kind of the body does, how the body decomposes and all that. It's not going to be like that. They're going to, they're never going to end, even though they had a precise beginning. And they said that that's all they can say for now. So that's all for this week, and next week we'll continue on with with chapter one of part two but before we leave off today i'd like to read our quote from the daily book of positive quotations by linda pacone kindness at home if you have only one smile in you give it to the people you love don't be slurly at home then go out in the streets and start grinning good morning at total strangers we put on our outside faces when we meet people outside our home we exchange small talks with the clerk at the store, nod and smile, and everyone we pass on the street say, don't worry about it when someone just bumps into you. We're just being polite, we think. At home, we drop the polite face because home is where we can be ourselves, right? We grumble and maybe even snap. We don't bother to smile because these people love us anyway. Why can't we treat friends and families as well as people we don't even know? I will treat those closest to me with the same courtesy I treat strangers. Strangers, My loved ones and I will be much happier. And with that, I hope you all have a great week as we're getting ready for Christmas time. 
and I hope we take what we learned today in the Spirits book and in our message and take that throughout the rest of our week and try and think about those things and make it an effort to better ourselves. If at all you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything at all, feel free to email me at cardiacradioforteens at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you right away. I'm Bia, and this is Cardiac Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening. This has been Cardiac Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening.